Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I welcome all of you back to the women's writing lecture series. This is as you can see at the fag end of the lecture series we have arrived at. This is lecture number 18 and the topic of today's discussion is alienation and fitting in. This topic gives you an idea because all of you by now has been very much familiar with the term alienation. So, alienation and fitting in, what happens to women who try to fit in, how do we try to fit in and why do we try to fit in? What is the meaning of this particular phrase fitting in? Well, we can try to fit in clothes, for example, if somebody is wearing a jeans or a t-shirt, we try to get inside the t-shirt or try to get inside the trousers. That means we are trying to take up a space which is confined, it is not an, uh, uh, a place which is completely free of any boundaries, it has some boundaries. When you are trying to wear a shirt, your hand must go through that particular shirt, shirt's hand. So it cannot go here, it cannot go there, it must fit the shirt's hand. So fitting in. Similarly, women and men of course, we all try to fit inside the society. If this is the society and this is our existence, this is how we exist, this is our experience, this is the life that we symbolize through this particular oval shepherd figure, we want to fit it inside this particular society, this structure. If we are like this, we will not be fitting inside the society, we will be going outside the society, a lot of portion will remain outside the society. That way we are not inside this particular square we think as society. Therefore, it is very important for us, let us consider that it is important for our day to day life to get the privileges from the state, to get the recognition from our family members that we need to stay inside this box. We cannot have a life outside this bo box, we must stay inside it. So whatever our experiences are, our behavior, our manner, the way we are talking to everybody, everything should follow the foundations of this. I will give you a very small example. You are living in a, let us say, Kannad speaking community. You are inside a community which speaks only Kannad, this is the Kannad speaking community. You are a person who has recently learned different language Kashmiri, you have learned Kashmiri and you want to live inside this Kannad speaking community with all the people inside it who speak Kannad languages. Now being a Kashmiri speaker that a person who is speaking the Kashmiri language, you cannot reside in this particular community because nobody understands Kashmiri. Similarly, if you belong to let us say the northern part of India where Hindi is frequently spoken, you are speaking in Hindi and this place over here, it is belonging to a northeast part of the country, let us say they speak Manipuri over there. They will not understand what you are saying, they will not be able to communicate with you. Therefore, for you to stay in this northeast society, you need to learn their language, you have to fit in. You cannot go on saying, oh I know Hindi, you must talk to me in Hindi. You should not expect something from that society where they do not know the language Hindi. So you are trying or even if I, I am trying to blend in blend inside the crowd, I am trying to fit in, I am trying to compromise. We will talk about compromises and sacrifices and what is the difference between the two 
in this particular lecture. But first let us talk about alienation, just this is a kind of revision that we are doing. It is best that we understand this particular word very nicely, uh, what should I say, shake up the memories, revise whatever we have learnt a little, a little revision is always essential in this regard. Okay. This is from again Merriam Webster dictionary, a withdrawing or separation of a person or a person's affections from an object or position of former attack. So, alienation in its very basic sense, it tries to show that somebody has withdrawn somebody's love for an object, giving favors to somebody you have withdrawn some kind of affection from that particular object or person. So, if I say that I have been alienated from my uh, family's love and care, that means my family does not love me and care for me now. There is also another word called estrangement. This particular word has something to do with the word strange. When you say strange, you mean that you do not know that, you are not aware of what it is, it is very strange to you, you cannot explain it. And when you turn it into a verb estrange, that means you are making somebody distant from you, which is not connected to you, not connected to your understanding, you are breaking the bond of understanding between that person, that object and yourself, you are estranging a person, you are estranging your friend, you are estranging your lover, you are estranging your companion. And then comes the word estrangement, that is you are making something unfamiliar to you, which was previously familiar to you. So, alienation is similar, only here my friend gets to go to school every day riding behind my bicycle. So, I go to school on my bicycle and my friend sits at the back seat of the bicycle and goes to a school with me. But the day I alienated her, the day I estranged her, she is no longer my friend, therefore she is not allowed to sit at the back of my bicycle. I will go to school on my bicycle, you can you know, you can go to school walking or get your own bicycle. So, that time you are previously when you are friends, you are doing her a favor, you are giving her a ride to school. But now since we are not friends anymore, I will not give her uh, any place in my bicycle, she can do whatever she wants. That means you are cutting her off from the favor. Now, when you consider this particular thing in the setup of capitalism, alienation has been used in a different way, the same meaning, but different way. Here, the thing that you are alienated from, you are entitled to that thing. For example, that same friend would say that, see, once you were sick and I came home from school, I took care of you, I stayed with you for a couple of days, do not you think that I deserve this, uh, your friendship? I have difficulty walking to school, it is a long distance, my parents are not, afford, uh, not able to afford a bicycle. So, can you not take me to the school on your bicycle? You are, you know, uh, we are not friends anymore, but you can give me some help. But just in this capital setup, I am entitled to my salary, to my money, the money I earn, but the state will say or the company that I work for will say no, you do not need all that money, we are going to keep some money from you and that is our profit. The company which I am working for is generating a huge profit, but I am not getting any part of the profit, I am just getting whatever uh, they have decided to pay me. So, I am not entitled to the profit which I am generating by working for them. So, that is, that is how they are alienating me from the money that I really uh, have earned, I am entitled to. That is alienation in case of capitalism and it is purely economical. Now, what is alienation in terms of human behavior? 
it can be physical it can be emotional what kind of thing is a physical alienation let us consider i'm sure you must have heard about the mad woman in the attic we have discussed this in our previous lectures also mad woman in the attic who is you know over there locked up inside the floor which is above the ground floor or the first floor the topmost floor of the house that woman who has gone into or descended into madness you don't go into madness you descend you know that is a hierarchy if you are sane then you are okay when your your brain is deteriorating your mental condition is deteriorating we consider it as a descent that is downgrading of your brain so your descent into madness or the woman's descent into madness that mad woman is not presentable to the society and therefore she needs to be kept locked up in the attic the mad woman in the attic is an example a classic example of physical alienation because she is not a part of the working society anymore she has been deprived of her social contacts any human contact we have the uh, story of uh, jane eyre we have the story of the yellow wallpaper one is the uh, first one was written by charlotte bronte the other one was uh, written by um, charlotte parkins gilman then we have a commentary on jane eyre a uh, you know a complimentary novel kind of it was written by jane rice that novel is called the white sargasso sea where that mad woman in the attic apparently she has been alienated from her cultural roots and she starts freaking out and creates a presence in the scene but in jane eyre that woman locks herself up kills herself does many things but behind the scenes nobody gets to know what really happened so in these kind of situations we find that there is a physical alienation you are considering that you are separating that person from the other people you are locking her up you are keeping her inside uh, a particular chamber you can easily go and look up the lecture on um, the trapped self which i have delivered there you will get a very good idea of what locking someone up means so that is a part of physical alienation then there are other ways also you are wanting to take up a job which is uh, going to give you some financial independence but you are not allowed to do it you are not uh, given a conveyance every time you do something you are given more work no no you do the housework you don't have to go outside they are creating obstacles in your path so that you don't go outside and get that job so that you don't go outside and get some financial assistance for yourself every time you have to earn money you have to uh, every time you want to buy something you want to get some services you have to beg from the male members of the family that is this condition of women whenever women wants to earn money in our society and of course in our society i say because if you consider the cosmopolitan societies that is not really uh, you know a real picture of india many uh, years ago mahatma gandhi said that if you want to understand india go to the rural areas because rural economy rural setup is what maximum a, uh, of indian um, continent is subcontinent is so if you go to the villages this condition this um, setup this system is still prevalent i'm sure you must have uh, known about uh, hysteria we have talked about that again in that uh, lecture where we have discussed charlotte perkins gilman's the yellow wallpaper women who were sick they were not brought to the uh, hospital or medical facility they were just treated uh, with some kind of herbs and roots and taken to some ojhas and babas and they do all sorts of uh unscientific things to uh, her so all these make a kind of layer around her experience and 
she is not allowed to move outside that layer. If this is the persona of the woman, a sphere is created around her. This is your border. This is your Lakshman Rekha. You cannot come outside the Lakshman Rekha. If you come outside the Lakshman Rekha, there is a Ravana who will pick you up and run away. That is of course a symbol that you will be suffering from uh, all sorts of problems. This is your existence and you must not go out of it. So what is happening? You are confined to a space and the entire space outside this particular sphere is alienated from you or you are alienated from this entire space which is outside this particular circle. So that is a classic example of physical alienation. Now what about the emotional alienation? You love somebody, you like somebody, you have a connection with somebody, forget somebody, you love writing, you love studying, you love to uh, sing, you love to dance because you find it as your passion, you find it as the thing that you want to do in your life. As a woman, we are not allowed to pursue our passions. We are trained right from the childhood that we are emotional and this is bad. Whatever women think with emotion, that is bad. Every time we consider, let us take that piano class, let us go for the singing class, let us at least start writing, no, it is bad. Because it is attached to your emotion. Emotion is still in our society considered as something which is lower than intelligence. Because everybody talks about IQ, intelligence quotient. But let me tell you students, IQ is a old term. Nobody talks about IQ right now. Everybody talks about EQ. Do you know what is EQ? EQ is emotional quotient. Emotional quotient is that area of your brain which stimulates you to do something with rapt attention. That is something which is directly related to your passion. Suppose you wanted to become a, an, an engineer, but your father is a doctor, your mother is a doctor and they do not see engineering as an option. They force you to go to medical school, but you don't like biology. You are emotionally connected to the engineering profession. You like it, you want to go there. But your uh, parents, your friends, your family, everybody is asking you to pursue one career option which you don't want to do. That time what happens, you are alienated from your emotional self. Every time family members come and break up a love relationship just because it is a love relationship and it is not an arranged relationship, they are actually alienating these two people from their emotional selves. There are many instances of honor killing in India where honor is associated to the women's body, is associated to the man who is trying to uh, take a woman away, run away, get married. Same caste, same religion, everything same, but their only problem is they went for a love marriage instead for an arranged one. So their emotional in, uh, involvement is completely discredited. You cannot be emotionally involved. If you are emotionally involved, it is considered as weak. Therefore, if you are weak, you are not manly enough. If you are not manly enough, you are not entitled to the position of power. So all of these matter. Whenever we talk about alienation, the most important thing that is affected is the power relationship in the society. The one who are in power, they alienate those who are not in power from their privileges. They take away all the privileges, they take away all the rights, they take away everything from these people just because they are not in power. It is a kind of exploitation. Exploitation is, I am giving you 10 rupees to work for one hour. After one hour, I ask you, please do half an hour work more. That is exploitation. 
if I charge you five rupees for that half an hour, you say, no, 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 why are you charging, why are you charging uh, uh, five rupees, uh, you are, you can do this, please do this. If I am not listening to you, then you take into consideration threat. If you do not uh, do this uh, half an hour, I will not give you 10 rupees also. You have to do this half hour work for free. This kind of corruption, this kind of management, this kind of system, everything leads to exploitation. Because I am supposed to get 5 rupees for the half an hour work that I am going to do after the one hour work. So, all of these setup we must understand are mostly made to save money for the capitalists, those who have the capital, those who are the investors, those who have crores and crores of rupee, they do not know what to do with. They are saving their money by this this particular system called exploitation, right. This is one of the poems that I have read and I would also like to share with you. This is a poem by Kamala Das, she is a Indian poet, also very famous for her confessional mode of writing. Confessional poetry is in her poems, she writes about her own experiences. She has a book of poems, a collection called Summer in Calcutta. If you want, you can go and have a look at this book. Once you go through that book, you will understand what confessional poetry means. Kamala Das is talking about her life has turned from becoming a person uh, who is shunt, uh, who is discouraged by the society to becoming a person who can claim her own freedom. Her journey from that to this, her journey as an author, all of these things, her observations, her decisions, the way she believes the world should function, the way she expects things to happen, everything you will get in her poems. You can trace out an entire philosophy through her poems. Dance of the eunuchs, I am sure you know what a eunuch is. A eunuch is a person who is neither male nor female, they do not have uh, developed genital organs. They are considered androgynous because they have both genital organs of the male and the female, but neither are completely developed enough. So, they can neither be considered as male nor can be considered as female. So, what do they do? The eunuchs in India, of course, we are very famous with the term called hijra. This is a term which people specially use as an example of verbal abuse. If somebody is not doing what they are supposed to do, we call them with a term called hijra. And every time I pronounce the word hijra, I am sure that you are having a sense of uncomfortableness inside you. How can we openly discuss this word? Because we cannot, that is why this word has become a verbal abuse. Because every time we discussed it, we considered it as a term, a derogatory term. But this is what they are called. This is what we call them, ladka, ladki. In Hindi, we call them, in Hindi, we call them hijra, those who are eunuchs. But we, the heterosexual part of the society, have considered this word as a verbal abuse and we abuse each other. We abuse the male, we abuse the females of the society with this word, that is the problem. So, coming back to the dance of the eunuchs, we know that the eunuchs dance is famous throughout our country, it is a cultural thing. Every time a baby is born in the family, there is news of marriage and everything. They come, they dance, they perform a sort of dance, they have a small musical instruments they carry alongside them and they play on it. They entertain people and after their performance of the dance, they also bless the couple, they bless the child, they bless the place. Finally, they ask for money for their blessings and performances. So, whatever they do, they consider themselves as Ardhanarishwar and the combined form of the Shiva and Durga, everything, but still they are alienated from the society, they are not a part of the society. In Indian culture, we knew that Ardhanarishwar 
in the ancient texts, Indian texts. Ardhanarishwar is a form where half is nar, uh, half is nari and half is Ishwar, that is Shiva and Parvati. We used to pray to that form. At one point of time, Ardhanarishwar was considered an object of reverence, of respect. After some time, that same embodiment in the human form, they are considered the dregs of the society, the lowest class of the society. That is how much our entire system, our entire society has changed, our beliefs have changed because we have given up reading books. We do not know our culture, we do not know our literature, we only know uh, okay, Hollywood movies, uh, Western education, but what about Indian education? What about our scriptures, our Puranas? Have we any knowledge of them? If we had, we would not be treating the eunuchs in a way in which, uh, which is depicted in the poem. So, let us start with the poem. It was hot, so hot before the eunuchs came to dance. Wide skirts going round and round symbols richly clashing and anklets jingling 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 beneath the fiery gulmohar with long braids flying dark eyes flashing they danced and they danced oh they danced till they bled there were green tattoos on their cheeks jasmines in their hair some were dark and some were almost fair their voices were harsh their songs melancholy they sang of lovers dying and or children left unborn. Some beat their drums, others beat their sorry breasts and wailed and writhed in vacant ecstasy. They were thin in limbs and dry like half burnt logs from funeral pyres. A drought and a rottenness were in each of them. Even the crows were so silent on trees and the children wide-eyed still, all were watching these, pro these poor creatures, convulsions. The sky crackled then, thunder came, and lightning and rain, a meager rain that smelt of dust in attics and the urine of lizards and mice. This poem, you can see, has a very distinct note of sadness. How do we understand that? It is very easy. Once you consider the words that have been used, you will see these things. Let us just, I try to ident identify those words. It was hot, so hot before the eunuchs came to dance. White skirts going round and round, cymbals richly clashing and anklets jingling, jingling, jingling beneath the fiery kulmohar with long braids flying, dark eyes flashing. They danced and danced and oh, they danced till they bled. There were green tattoos on their cheeks, jasmines in their hair, some were dark and some were almost fair, their voices were harsh, their songs melancholy, they sang of lovers dying and children left unborn. Some beat their drums, some others beat their sorry breasts and wailed and writhed in vacant ecstasy. They were thin in limbs and dry like half burned logs. From funeral pyres, a drought, a rottenness, where in each of them, even the crows were so silent on the trees and the children wide-eyed still. All were watching these poor creatures' convulsions. The sky crackled, thunder came and lightning and rain and a meager rain that smelt of dust in attics and the urine of lizards and mines. So we are going to study these underlying portions. Dark eyes flashing. Of course, they have put some kind of coal in on the, you know, verge of their eyes. That is something to darken the eyes. So, why is it flashing? Do not you think flashing has something to do with light? Something to, uh, from where light gets reflected very much? A torch light, a flashlight. So, eyes are flashing because they are watery. Watery eyes. Why watery? Because they are crying. They danced and they danced, oh they danced till they bled. So their dance is not a dance which we generally associate with happiness or passion because if you go 
to watch a performance, let's say a dance performance, you will see that we call them an artist, either they are performing classical arts, hip hop music, anything. But the dance of the eunuch is different. It is not an act of happiness, it is not an act of happiness. It is rather an expression of sadness. It is like moving your limbs, dancing until your inner sorrow becomes a part of the outer world when your legs are bleeding, while your legs are bleeding. When you, your legs are bleeding, are you able to dance? Can you imagine the pain? You are dancing on a floor on the ground. First of all, eunuchs are not entertained inside the house. We ask them to perform their dance in the outside, right? They are dancing on the street, on the ground, uh, in front of the house. Maybe there are pebbles, there are rocks, there are stones, everything gets inside their legs, still they are dancing. Because that is what they have to do, they know they have to do it to earn their livelihood. So they dance till they bled. There were green tattoos on their cheeks, okay, their songs melancholy. So this time we understand that this is not the dance these eunuchs perform when they are visiting somebody. This is the dance they are doing for themselves. Because when they go to some uh, person's house while visiting, they generally so sing merry songs, good songs, happy songs. That this is going to happen, that is going to happen, your child is going to be this, your child is going to be that, your married, married life is going to turn out like this. Everything is happy. But in this particular dance, their songs are melancholy. Melancholy means sad, lovers dying, children left unborn. They are singing with the themes of dying lovers who cannot die old as married couples. They are dying very young and children who are not yet because they as human beings cannot reproduce. If they love somebody, they cannot just go and say that I love you because they will not be accepted in the society. This entire thing, this entire scenario, this amount of sadness, this amount of pain in the experience of the eunuchs, this is chiefly due to the fact that they are completely alienated from the heterosexual society. Heterosexual means male, female, two sexes, heterosexual society. They do not have the favor of loving somebody. They do not have the privilege of marriage. They do not have the right, they did not have the right to vote. Now they have, but just, you know, maybe few uh, decades ago, they did, not, they did not have the right to vote even. That kind of condition they were living in. This is the, you know, anatomical description from starting from here. Others beat their sorry breasts. They don't have breasts. And even if they do have breasts, they are uh, futile because they cannot have a baby ever. They do not have that kind of mechanism inside their body so that they can conceive a child. So their breasts and their motherhood is a sham and wailed and writhed in vacant ecstasy. Neither can they enjoy the love of a lover. They cannot tap from the physical pleasures, the world of physical pleasures also because they have underdeveloped sexual organs. So they cannot have a physical intimacy with other people. They were thin in limbs and dry, very unlike what we consider as a good kind of human figure, healthy human figure. Their figure is not a healthy human figure. Like half burned logs from funeral pyres. Have you seen a funeral pyre? A funeral pyre is a, is a composition of wood, you know, wooden logs kept one after the other. It is uh, set in such a pattern that it looks like a bed. Then the dead bodies are put on that particular wooden setup and the uh, entire thing is set on fire. That is how the bodies are burnt, cremated in the Hindu religion. When after the bodies have burnt away, have you seen the logs which have not burnt, they are left like that. They are not used in another pyre. 
they are just left like that. Max to max they are picked up and thrown into the river. So, their legs were like half burnt logs from funeral pyres, a drought and rottenness were in each of them. Drought why? Drought means lack of water, rottenness is the opposite because rottenness means that particular thing has rotten that means it has some kind of water inside it. They are dry in some part and wet in some part because at one part the fire has been put down by you know dropping water in it, one part it is still dry because of the heat that was produced during the funeral rites while it was still on fire. So, neither they are a part of the fire nor are they part of the water, their legs are like that half burnt log. Even the crows were so silent on the trees, they were crying, they are wailing, they are writhing in sorry vacant ecstasy, I forgot to discuss this phrase, vacant ecstasy, they want to have some intimacy with somebody, but it is completely vacant, it has nothing inside it, they cannot be, they cannot think of being embraced by a lover, because it is futile, they cannot please the other person. Okay, coming back to this silent on the trees and the children wide eyed, Still, have you seen crows and children sitting quietly? It is very unlikely. If a child is there, no, the child will do something, uh, pick up the pen, you know, pick its uh, nose, make some kind of noise, try to draw attention, find some other children, they go and play around. Crows are also like that. They come, they sit, they caw, caw a lot, make people crazy. So, sometimes uh, even in village areas especially if crows come and sit in your house, people go outside the house and shoo away all the crows. But in this case, the crows and children all are quiet because they are very much terrified by the look where the uh, eunuchs who are mostly seen as very happy creatures are actually crying. All were watching their poor, these poor creatures convulsions. So, they are not only dancing, their body is shaking, shaking with anger. Convulsions is a kind of shaking of the body which happens uh, due to hysterical um, you know diseases. If you have hysteria, your body will shake like this, you will not be able to look straight, your uh, teeth will be jammed. So, sometimes the same thing happens when you are angry, when you are extremely unhappy, you will clench your fists and you will you know shake with anger, that is what happened, that is what is happening over here. The sky cracked, then thunder came and lightning and rain, everything happened, every the nature was upset, everything was going on, that smelt of dust in attic, everything will happen, but still their existence will be like the dust in the attics, nobody comes to look at it. Because it is in the attic, everybody for, forgets it. And the urine of lizards and mice, a pathetic state. Whenever you think of it, all you can think of it is a place that I do not want to go. Similarly, our understanding is to a place where we are happy. We do not want to think about the life of the eunuchs. We do not want to go there, we do not want to envision it, we do not want to characterize it, discuss it. Oh, it is something I do not want, please take it away, please keep it inside the box, do not tell me about these things. So, what is happening? The eunuchs are steadily marched outside the society. Nobody is going to keep them inside the society. Now, why do we want to fit in? the necessity of fitting in. The theory of social contract by Jean-Jacques Rousseau, this person was a philosopher who came up with the idea of the nature state, which was a natural state where everybody had equality. But what happened was that some people were stronger than the other people. So, what they did was okay, if I have my own land and I am doing agriculture, I am grazing my own cattle, I am raising my own food, what if I also have the land next to me? 
I will have more food. I will, uh, I can take more wives, more children, everybody will be satisfied. So people started fighting with each other. This is how the civilization came into being. People started fighting with each other. And once they started fighting, they also started taking men around them and asking help, thereby building small groups. That okay, if my field is attacked by that group, you will come and protect me. When your field is attacked by some other group, I will go and protect you. So they started forming groups. Once they started forming groups, they also after some time thought, since we are groups, let us go and capture that field. That person has no group. Let us go and capture that field. We will have more field to ourselves. So once they went and started capturing that field, so that field has that person, that person's house is there, that person's wife is there, children are there. They occupy the entire thing. So once they occupy the entire thing, they become a bigger group. So this bigger group starts going and invading other smaller groups and taking them in. So everybody went, uh, became tired, they said, no, this is not going to work. What we are going to do that, we are going to elect a person who will be in charge of protection. You will give us protection, we will do as you say. If you say that, no, we are going to move from this place to that, we will follow you. But in return, you must protect me and my family from other people. Okay, then somebody was given the charge and that person took the charge from the other people. These people called this person as the king. The king provided protection to the people uh, who elected him the king. In return, everybody followed him. Everybody suspended their own rights. Everybody suspended their freedom to some point and therefore the king became a little bit more powerful than the people. What happened to the women? The women wanted to fit inside. We, the women wanted to become a part of that society of course. Now when you want to become a part of the society, you must follow the king. Now the king is a man, the king is not a woman. The king does not share the experiences of that particular woman. Now the woman inside the family has the uh, only privilege, uh, she is the only one with the privilege of bearing a child, right? So when I am going to bear a child as a woman, I want people who can protect me and my child. I want that kind of people around me. This is the basic instinct of a woman. I am selecting, I am giving you the power so that you can protect me when I am bearing a child. That is the concern, that is the safety and security issue. That is why women started making compromises. Okay, fine, I will do whatever you say in return you must protect me and the child from other groups who are you know occupying my field and my family if they come and occupy my property then i will have to go to someone i don't want to go to lastly need to belong we want to fit in we want to fit in because we want to belong to a land we want to say this is my land this is my house these are my parents we want to say all those things we think that being a part of a tradition, being a part of the history, we are very much enriched. Our experience, our presence is much more meaningful. All our life, we are in the search of meaning. What is the meaning of my existence? Why am I existing at this current time? Why not 20 years back? Why is it today? that I am existing on this plane.
on this inside this society. So, every time we want to fit in, we have to consider the social contract which was made because we wanted to become a part of the society, we wanted to contribute to the security of the future generation whom we are going to give birth to. We made a deal that ok, you take care of our security, we are going to compromise. But when a woman tries to fit in, these are the things that happen. Guidebook of rules and regulations. I have mentioned about the conduct book culture discussed in lecture number 7, you can just go and have a look at it. Every time that you want to become a part of the society, the majority, the dominating part, they will come up with a set of rules and regulations. They will say ok, this is the rules and regulations you have. Rule number 1, you cannot go out after 10. Rule number 2, you cannot come inside the house without taking a bath. The rule number 3, you always have to take care of the baby. Rule number 4, you have to take care of the husband. Unless and until you do all of these things, unless and until you cook dinner, unless and until you make supper, unless and until you take care of the uh, in-laws, you are not a woman. You are not considered a part of the society. And let me tell you that this practice of rules and regulations has been inculcated in some modern religions also. There are few groups, you know, sub sect kind of. They are followers of this sadhu, that baba, this ma. They have their own book. I am not going to take names right now, but you will be very much surprised that these books contain rules and regulations for being a housewife. These are the good things you must do as a housewife. These are the good things that you must do as a daughter. As a mother, everything is sectionally divided. If you are a mother, you do like this. If you are a daughter, you do oh, and moreover. If you are a daughter, you can eat with the father. They are giving you permission. You can eat with the father. If you are a housewife, no, you cannot eat with the husband. You cannot eat with the in-law. If you are a mother, no, you cannot eat with the child. You cannot eat with the husband because everybody must eat before you. And I am very sure that this is common. I have seen two or three books like this in my life. This is very common around such small sects of people. They follow a certain way, they greet each other with a certain way, they say that this is the way of life, they give you books like these and that they make sure that whatever you do, sacrificing your hunger, sacrificing your food for your husband, sacrificing your food for your daughter, sacrificing your food for your in-laws, everything is being added up and you will be rewarded in the afterlife. Or even better, you will get more respect and honor from your husband or father or father-in-law. If you do all of these things, you will get more respect, more recognition, more approval for everything. See the amount of hypocrisy still in our society. The society will create pressure. Then there is a particular space within which you should fit. If these are the rules and regulations which are mentioned in the book and if you are not fitting within these rules and regulations, then you are not a good woman. You are not considered a good contribution to the society. You are not considered a part of the family. You are considered a person who is trying to break the family, trying to break the tradition, trying to be monstrous. That is why you will see whenever the wife is not going by the instructions issued by the in-laws or issued by the husband, the wife is uh, mistreated. People come and scold her, people come and quarrel with her. Many instances of mental harassment as well as physical harassment has been reported in India. So, if you do not fit within the space, it is a problem. You are 
cooking good you are a good woman if you are eating your dinner after your husband you are a good woman as soon as you want to go to the gym you are a bad woman your good qualities immediately gets dissolved because oh she wants to go to the gym that means she is bad because that is something which is not accepted by the society women why should they go to the gym they have so much household work they can do their exercise while you know making rotis uh, you know getting food from the refrigerator uh, cleaning the floor that is physical exercise why do you need to go to gym these kind of mentalities cannot move outside the prescribed perimeter i told you lakshman rekha if you try to move outside the combined uh, the circumference that has been given to you you will be questioned why did you go there what is the problem why can't you stay home you will face so many questions that you will feel disgust your freedom has been completely taken away toxic relationship even if you try to fit in you become you enable you support a toxic relationship because whatever that person as a husband is doing to you that person is also likely to do it to your daughter do it to your sister if you enable that person you are not only enabling a history of male domination but you are also creating a world where your daughter your sister all those who are younger than you is going to enter so compromises and sacrifices see this is the difference you can just have a look compromise a settlement of differences by arbitration or by consent reached by mutual concession both the parties suppose there is a problem this is the problem somebody who is a little bit above the line and somebody who is little bit below the line you are asking this person no no you just remove this entire portion you just remove this entire portion you just come and become this much you are asking that person to sacrifice this entire portion on the opposite if you have the same situation and this person is asking you then no 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 you must rise up to my point in both the cases the party this party is asking this party to increase their points this party is asking this party to decrease their points to here in both the cases they are asking for sacrifice but what happens in a compromising situation is this is the situation you go this much this person comes down to this much. so you are also not giving more effort that person is not also giving more effort you are giving equal effort to come to an equilibrium so that is mostly compromise is a good thing it is a good for relationships for uh, power relations in our um, day to day life sacrifice is something really bad it is destructive destruction or surrender of something for the sake of something else something given up or lost completely so where sacrifice is actually you are cutting off your hand compromise is you are just not using your hand for the time being it is still there this is an example of a novel which if you read you will find the kind of alienation i'm speaking about clarissa dalloway 51 year old lady septimus warren smith he is a world war 1 veteran who returned shell shocked peter walsh an old friend of clarissa all these people the first one she compromises the second one is not able to compromise he sacrifices his mental peace and finally he commits suicide the last one is trying to move on again a form of compromise clarissa try to fit in smith doesn't try anymore smith commits suicide peter walsh tries to move on so this particular novel mrs dalloway you will find the variation of the idea of alienation how we are alienated from the society how we are estranged from the society and what happens to a woman who cannot sacrifice who wants only to compromise you will find from this particular 
novels that we have previously discussed in details. These things if you just go back and look at the previous lecture you will get see the yellow wallpaper, you will see the character of Jean, she descends into madness, color purple, Silly tries to talk to God in every letter she writes and tries to move on with her life. Dopadi mentioned she actually sacrifices everything for a cause. Jashoda, she thinks she is not sacrificing, but she does. Zaitun, she fights out everything. She sacrifices her own comfort zone for the sake of living her life. Also, she wants to run away from her abusive husband, therefore creates more uncertainty, uncertainties in her life. So once you go through these things, you will be very clear about why private space is not alienation. If you think that your private space is something which has no privileges, no um, freedom, then you are wrong. Private space, you just go through this one, this is also something written by Virginia Woolf. It's an essay, she talks about Judith Shakespeare who wanted to have a private space but could not have because she's a woman. Therefore, unlike her brother William Shakespeare, of course this is an imaginary character. She could not become a writer because she's a woman, she did not have a private space. Great minds in this essay, Virginia Woolf also says that great minds are androgynous, two sides not really alone. So if you have two sides of the same mind, if your mind is both masculine and feminine, you are not alone then. Your mind has two separate sides. So if you think that this is I am alone, then you are very wrong. And educational disadvantages have inhibited women's creativity. So if you don't have financial and educational advantages, if you cannot earn your money and if you are not given ample education, you are not able to tap from language and create something from within. You are not skillful enough to handle the language and make it creative. In order to become creative, you need to have some kind of financial security and education. Private space, actually this particular a room of one's own that you need to have place, a house, a room where you can keep your own belongings and call it your own room. Thereby you will be able to understand or experience your own individuality and it is nothing to do with alienation because that time you are choosing your loneliness, you are not being forced into it. Alone and alienated among 600 playmates, this is a very famous kind of expression that was used by Charles Lamb in this essay, St. Christ's Hospital. They seem to them to recur too often, though I sought them few enough and one after another they all failed me. The narrator is talking about his childhood friends and they were very disappointing to the narrator. And I felt myself alone among 600 playmates. Sometimes you can also be lonely when there are many people around you. This is what Charles Lamb wanted to discuss in his essay Christ's Hospital. Loneliness is not something related to being amongst people. You can be alone if you choose to be alone. It is not always physical, it is mental also. What happens? Lack of opportunity of expression. These are the things that makes you mentally lonely. You can find it in these particular texts and the only person who talks against the grain, who gives you a way out is Eunice D'Souza. You will be very happy and uh, you know encouraged when you read Eunice D'Souza's poetry. She talks about how to overcome loneliness. Her contribution to women's writing has a very strong hold in India. Once you go through her works, you will be able to find what loneliness is and what it is not and how it can be dealt with. I hope you have understood what alienation and feeling lonely, disappointed, feeling lack of privileges, not getting your, the things that you deserve from the society, what it means for a woman, 
how it appeals to the women's experiences all throughout the world. We cannot generalize it of course, but there are instances when we will have to consider that this feeling of alienation is general. Thank you very much for being with us today here. I hope we have gained enough insight on this particular topic. Since we are uh, nearing the end of this lecture series, I hope you have a lot of discussion going on amongst your classmates. See you in the next lecture. Thank you very much.